Hey, my name is Sarah, and as you can see, I am in the car. That's because I am doing my very first vlogging, and we are going to Rochelle Meet book signing. Yes! So, yeah, it's going to be a long drive over, and it is going to take me a while to navigate downtown traffic. So, just want to let y'all know that we are going to a book signing. Oh, this is so exciting. And this is going to take two hands on the wheel since my car is a little stubborn. So I will get back with y'all in just a few. And so, yeah. See you soon. We are here, ladies and gentlemen. Murder by the book. Yay! Okay, now let me go find the parking spot. Oh my god. Look at that. Look at that. Hello. Hi. Uh, will this be over here for the Rachel Need? Okay. Uh, Look at that. Woo. So we are really here early, so we can go take a look around. Two. I think I've toured the entire bookstore and I'm just gonna take a seat and wait until it's 6 day because we got a while. So, yeah. It's so pretty. So I've waited for like, you know, close to an hour now and it is now about, say, 6, 12, 6, so it's almost time. Hope everyone got a ticket. This guy's on the line. <laughs> As promised. Yeah, I don't know who's been following those on social media with me pimping these guys for this event, but I'd ask them, like, what city wants which guy? And someone in Houston wanted the werewolf for the, for the prize. I don't know if you're out there, if you even showed up, but this is what you can win tonight. So, so do make sure uh, you guys get the ticket. Um, so I am going to talk to you guys a little bit about Midnight Jewel, because um, I know not everyone knows what the Glittering Court is, so I'll catch you up on that and what's going on in Rochelle Mead's world at the moment. Uh, and then we'll do some questions, whatever you guys want to talk about. We can keep doing Midnight Jewel, we can talk about Vampire Academy, because I know a few of you have read it, right? Yes. 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 We, can, we can talk about that, other stuff. Um, weather, summer, whatever. Uh, and then we'll sign some books and it'll be awesome. So uh, Midnight Jewel is the second book in the Glittering Court series. Um, and if you aren't familiar with it, it is a fantasy trilogy. Excuse me, it's set in a fantasy world that that is made up. Um, I've had a few people get confused, including Amazon, which lists it as historical fiction. <laughs> uh, some parts are meant to um, and they're inspired by colonial America and age of exploration in Europe. And so there's these themes that I think look historical, but everything, all the places, all, you know, it's all made up. And I'm so afraid someone is going to read one of these, think it is historical, and then like take their American Revolution history test to school and write down like one of my cities or something, and, and I'll feel really bad. So it's, it's made up, guys. It's made up. It's fun. Um, uh, one thing, though, that really is uh, inspired by history, uh, when uh, the English colonies were settled in America. Uh, it was primarily by men. Men outnumbered women three to one in the 13 colonies. Uh, and this created kind of a wife shortage, as you can imagine. And some enterprising people uh, tried to recruit girls in England and bring them over to be wives. And they would like sell them off for bushels of tobacco and, and other not glamorous things like that. Uh, and so in my world, um, it is much more glamorous, but the premise is sort of the same. Uh, we're back in the old world, there's this company that takes poor, humble girls, um, gives them some polish and some culture, dresses them up, and brings them over in the hopes of making uh, wealthy marriages in the new world. Uh, which sounds nice and neat, and it should all just work beautifully, um, but these girls have their own ideas. 
uh, and fall in love with who they want to fall in love with, and chaos ensues, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and what is cool about this trilogy is that each book is about one girl, and it's told from her point of view, and it's more or less a complete novel, so you could read them out of order if you wanted, because each book is its own story. Uh, but they all take place in the same span of time. So um, although it is not like a scene-by-scene -scene replay in each book, like each book is pretty different, there will be little snippets of things you may see in one book that don't make a lot of sense until you read the next book. So for example, in the first book, maybe some guy walks across the room and it means nothing to you because it means nothing to that book's girl. And then later you find out in the next book, oh, that was a spy passing a message at that same party. Um, so there's little things like that happening at the same time, which is fun. And uh, in this book, the, the newest one, Midnight Jewel, the main character is Mira, who is a refugee from a country that's been in civil war. Um, so she's had, she's had kind of a rough background and she's kind of looking for peace. She's also hoping to find her brother, uh, who has gone on ahead of her to the New World uh, as a type of indentured servant. Um, so she's ready to toe the line. She's like, okay, I'll put on a ball gown. I'll stop getting in fights with knives and alleys and things like that. Um, but then things start to go awry again. She gets involved uh, with some vigilantes who are helping the oppressed at night uh, because whether it's fiction or real life, there's always people being abused by those in power and she can't, she can't handle that, so she kind of stands up for that. Uh, she also falls in with this spy um, who is hoping to use her as kind of an asset like at parties to spy on other people. Um, and he is he's dark and complicated and moody, but you know, so appealing. And uh, yeah, and it's it's complex and it's wonderful. And uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of sword fighting and making out. And I'm a, I'm a fan and cool dresses, um, which which was one of my goals in this series. Uh, sometimes I feel like uh, when it comes to tough women, people only think like you can be tough if you're in a leather coat out punching people. And I think. I think that does a disservice to women to assume that is the only way women can be strong because I think very often women are strong through their relationships and their love for people and their convictions. And so even though Mira is kind of someone out battling in the night, you know, it is her principles that, that make her strong and she will be a strong woman in a pretty dress. So that is my quick and dirty uh, wrap up of that. Um, so like I said, I can keep going on that if you have questions about that series. Or again, anything else uh, you want to talk about. You got me here. When did this start at 6 30? I'm thrown off. It's usually on the hour, so I'm like, whoa, where'd 40 minutes go? Yeah, we got like 10 or 15 more minutes for the questions. Yes. Are you going to do another game of Oh my gosh, it's the first question at every every <laughs> signing. I, <laughs> no, it's a good question. It's a great question. And it's, it's one I dodge online, so I think there are people who just like wait for these signings. They're like, what's she, what she going to do in person? Um, now, there, there is, it will be another Age of X book. I can't tell you when. Um, it, it'll probably have to be self-published, and uh, I am the worst boss for myself. Um, giving myself a deadline because I'm like always giving myself extensions and I don't know you know when that'll come together and also um, I do have my other contracted books which have to kind of take priority so it is there it's all planned out the like there is a continuation of the story um, I just don't have a date for you and I know that kills people um, and I do feel bad you you are in good company as a very passionate fan base it, it surprises me it's an amazing book um, oh thank you Thank you so much. It's a, yeah, it's a fun, complex world. And it, it'll come back, I promise. Any questions? Yeah, or, 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 or. <laughs> Even though this is a trilogy, since it's such a neat world, are you thinking that maybe there'll be another series of books coming out of it? Uh, in the Glittering Court? Um, there could be. I Everything I write, I, I always imagine more and lots of times I leave myself like little holes to kind of jump back into in a series. I'm sure you've seen them. Um, I, don't, so I don't know with the Glittering Court. Um, the nice thing about its format is I could keep going with, I mean I could continue these girls' stories, you know, what happens to them now, or you could just keep doing a bunch of single self-contained, you know, another character's thing. Um, but uh, the answer is I don't know um, because I've always got 
some, I, some other idea in the back of my head, be it something totally new or to revisit another series. Like sometimes I want to circle back to my older stuff. So not immediately, but it's definitely a possibility because it is a fun world. Is there a possibility we might get, like, say, a standalone or a series of a young A before meeting Janine Hathaway? <laughs> the, oh, yeah. the young Abe adventures? Yes. <laughs> wow. I never thought about that. Um, so, no, I again cannot give you a definitive answer. I don't think I've, I've answered any questions solidly so far. I'm over three. Um, I have never thought of that. And that that's astonishing because uh, I'm usually prepared without any questions. Um, I have been asked many times to do the story of how Janine and Abe meet because no one even understands how that yeah. could have yeah. come to be. Yeah. So that probably will happen uh, uh, eventually uh, for sure. But I haven't thought much about his youth. Um, and at the risk of just like giving some of you palpitations, I have, I have this running joke with my husband about the young Dimitri Chronicles. Oh, like, no. like teenage Dimitri, like having epic adventures uh, in, in Russia. Um, who watches the 100? You guys remember Finn? Yeah. Yeah, when, we were, when he was on, my husband, I told him, I was like, he could be young Dimitri. And that was where this <laughs> joke just started, like the young Dimitri adventures. So um, maybe that would happen before Abe. But, uh, I don't want you guys now going online and saying this is like, don't, <laughs> don't bend this rumor and suddenly say it's happening because it, it's not yet. <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened uh, to Chantal and Duncan and when they escaped from the alchemist, the reincarnation? Like, they escaped and then nothing, like she was locked up for like a year and then she was free. They did go free. Um, I mean, they're. Their story sort of faded away from uh, Sydney and Adrian, so we, we didn't follow it. Uh, it's hard to follow after every subset of characters. Um, I, I can say for something like that, well, probably everyone that was in re-education could have, and I don't say this flippantly, could have used some kinds of therapy. Like, that is, no, that's not a healthy situation. So I would imagine before they could go on uh, to, to have a relationship and continue their romance, I think they would have some adjustment to do with that. But... Yeah, no, their story's kind of left unfinished. It's something that could be touched on in another book. Yeah. Okay, I've got to ask this. Does Dimitri and Rose have kids? <laughs> Come on, we know it can happen now. Well, you know, have, have I given anything? Well, I've not answered anything solidly to <laughs> my because there is no solid answer I can give to that. I mean, because what if I do write a series and that's the biggest development? They do, or maybe they don't, and that's the big like I can't give away <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> you know, that's it'd be like you know someone asking me at a shadow kiss signing, do Rose and Dimitri make it out of this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, someone give me a yes or no question. No, go ahead. Will we have an update on Miss T and Malachi? What was that? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Williger and Malachi Wolf. Oh, um, yeah. uh, they're uh, they are they are fantastic. Uh, such an adventurous <laughs> person. I just I love to read about him. And in the Bub in the Bloodline series, he was just like <laughs> you never know where he was going to end up. No, and I I loved him for that. And I I absolutely I just live for weird random stuff like out in, in the world like that. And the weirdest thing is Malachi Wolf was sort of inspired by my best friend in high school. Hold on for the whole story, because I know you're already like, what? Um, we, we did this school project where we were doing some, we had to act out some stuff, and she was playing this character who had a hook for a hand, and we were ad-libbing a lot of stuff as we went through this, and she was always in her scenes giving this completely deadpan, spontaneous reason for why she had a hook for her hand. Um, <laughs> And if you knew this person, like she's, she's a very quiet, just kind of ordinary person. And to hear her just spouting off this crazy, you know, like I found some homeless kittens and I was trying to give them some food and they bit my hand right off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're amazing. And that's kind of where Malachi Wolf comes from because he does that. He just like, he's deadpan and he starts telling you about his Aztec adventures with, you know, and it's just like, it makes no sense. And I love it. I love that he does that. Um, but again, uh, much like Duncan and Chantal, his, um, 
And then Miss Terwilliger, I'm sure they're happy having wacky adventures. I, one thing that perplexes me is how do how do their cats and chihuahuas like this, right? That wasn't something I thought of when I got them together. Um, I'm sure they're happy. I don't have an answer for that, and it could be answered in another book. Good. I just like to let you know you're my very first vlogging adventure. Oh really? Are yes. you recording us now? Yes. If I sign your book, excellent. Do you um, I'm have a, like a book review yes. channel you're doing? All right. And what's yours called? Once Upon the Book. I've seen that, haven't I? Yeah. Maybe I'm familiar. small. That name's familiar. There might be a bookstore name. Actually. I don't know if you know that. You've got a story mm -hmm. sharing. It's very cool anyways. Are you local here? Or did yes. You I'm local. I'm on the other side of town. Okay. I did not sign any of these here. I was one of the people who signed a petition for the next movie. Did you? My sister <laughs> took me to watch that for my birthday. Really? Oh, yes. that's fun. And I found out that like, when you were at the gallery, I was like, dang, I'm in class. Like, was it for the movie? Or yes. It might have just been the actors. I'm not sure about it. It's just them. Thank you, Rochelle Mead, for coming to Houston. Thank you very much because we don't get that many authors that do. It was a whole lot of fun. There were some questions going around, maybe some possibilities. I had my DVD sign. It's like, let me see if I can get it. So she gave a little bit of information, as you can see, about Midnight Jewel for you who are like, oh, I need to read it right now. So yeah, here's my DVD. I am a major fan of the movie. I don't care what people say. I love the movie. So, yeah. Houston, Rochelle Mead has come. And, yeah. Thank you so much. Love Vampire Academy. Love Bloodlines. So gonna love reading the Glittering Court series. And, yeah. Can't wait for anything else you have to come out with, Rochelle. So, yeah. My name is Sarah, and this was my very first vlogging adventure and getting to meet an author. Thank you. So, bye.